Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at empirical formulas. This is going to be for students who are doing the higher tier only. So an empirical formula is the simplest ratio of elements in a compound. If we look at some of the examples that I've drawn here, in the first one, brown and green. We have one brown dot and we have one green dot. Here, brown, two, green, two. But because we can divide both of these numbers by two, the simplest ratio is brown, green. Here we have brown, three, green, three. We can divide both of these by three, so the simplest ratio again is brown, green. Same with this one, brown, four, green, four. We can divide all of these by four, and the simplest ratio is brown, green. In both forms can get quite complicated, so here we have brown, two, green, four. The smallest number we can divide these by is two, so the empirical formula is brown, green, two. Here we have brown, two, red, four, green, two. The smallest number we can divide these by is two, so our empirical formula is brown, red, two, green. Here we have brown, one, two, three, four, red, four, green, one, two, three, four, five, six. The smallest number we can divide these by is two. So we have brown, two, red, two, green, three. I have a very particular way that I like my students to set out answers to an empirical formula question. This won't surprise you if you see my other videos, I do have rather particular ways that I like things done. Um, the reason I like things done this way is because it's very clear, it's very easy to mark, it gives the examiners no excuse for not giving you full marks in the question. So this is our question up here. A gas is made from 60% oxygen and 40% sulphur. Find the empirical formula. So what I'd like you to do is set out a table with the element, the number in the question, the mass number, the number of moles and the ratio. If um, number of moles confuses you, um, I'm just about to do a video on this, so go and look that up. So the first thing we do is we write down the element in the top here. So we have oxygen and we have sulphur. Then we just write down the number in the question. So oxygen, 60, sulphur, 40. We write down the mass number. We need this for our periodic table. Just to remind you, the mass number is the larger of the two. So for oxygen, that is 16. And for sulphur, that is 32. Now, to find the number of moles, we have to do a bit of maths. We divide the number in the question by the mass number. So that's 60 divided by 16 equals 3.75. And 40 divided by 32 equals 1.25. Then we need to divide both of these by the smallest number. So the smallest number here is 1.25, so we divide both of these by 1.25. So 3.75 divided by 1.25 is 3, and 1.25 divided by 1.25 is 1. So the ratio that we have is 3 oxygens to 1 sulphur. Now you can write this, because you can't just leave it there, you have to write down your answer as S. O3 or O3S. Doesn't matter, both ways should still get you the marks. Um, because I'm a teacher, I just have to know that this, this one here is the correct way around to write it. But you can write it either way in the exam, and um, you'll get the marks either way. So in this question here, we have 75% carbon and 25% hydrogen. The elements for the first column is carbon and hydrogen, the number in the question, 75 and 25, the mass number of carbon, 
is 12, the mass number of hydrogen is 1. 75 divided by 12 equals 6.25. 25 divided by 1 equals 25. Remember, we need to divide these numbers here. We then divide by the smallest number, which in this case is 6.25. So 6.25 divided by 6.25 is 1. 25 divided by 6.25 equals 4. So our answer is C, H, 4. So in this question we have a reaction where a student is combining 5.4 grams of aluminium and 4.8 grams of oxygen and we need to find the empirical formula of the product. So this is slightly different from the previous question because we're talking about grams where the other question was talking about percentages. In this situation, for empirical formulas, unlike every other single situation in your GCSE, the units do not matter. We could be talking about percentage, we could be talking about grams, we could be talking about a uh, number of people. It really, really doesn't matter. So our elements is aluminium and oxygen. The number in the question is 5.4 and 4.8. The mass number of aluminium is 27 and for oxygen it's 16. We need to divide these two. So 5.4 divided by 27 is 0.2. 4.8 divided by 16 equals 0.3. Now we just need to divide it by the smallest of these two numbers, which is in this case this one. So 0.2 divided by 0.2 is 1. 0.3 divided by 0.2 equals 0 0.3. 0 0.5. Now we're never going to have a situation where we have 0.5 or something, so what we need to do is just times this by 2 to make that 2, to make that 3. So our empirical formula is going to be Al2O3. So here we have 0.48 grams of oxygen being combined chemically with 1.68 grams of iron. Find the empirical formula. So the elements that we have are oxygen and iron. The number in the question is 0.48 grams and 1.68 grams. The mass number for oxygen is 16, the mass number for iron is 56. We need to divide these two numbers to get the number of moles. So 0.48 divided by 16 equals 0.03. 1.68 divided by 56 equals 0.03. So the ratio here is 1 to 1. Okay, the question's starting to get trickier now. What I'd like you to do now we've gone over a few together, I'd like you to pause, have a go doing this yourself, and then come back and check the answers. So this one's slightly trickier, you need to do an extra step of thinking. The question is, a compound of phosphorus chloride is 22.55% phosphorus. Find the empirical formula. So phosphorus chloride, you should be able to work out that we have phosphorus in there, and then the other element is going to be chloride. Now the number in the question for phosphorus is 22.55. And because this is a percentage, we know this needs to add up to 100. So 100 minus 22.55 equals 0.5. So the mass number for phosphorus is 31 and for chlorine it is 35.5. So for the number of moles we need to divide these two numbers. So 22.55 divided by 31 this equals 0.7. 77.45 divided by 35.5 equals 2.2. .2. So we need to divide them by the smallest number. 
So 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.7 is 1. 2.2 divided by 0.7 equals 3. So phosphorus chloride is PCl3. Now I know in this one I had to do a bit of rounding, but um, they might ask you to do that, but they won't ask you to do too much of that in the exam. So our question here is, an oxide of carbon contains 27% carbon, find the empirical formula. So you need to know that in an oxide we have oxygen, and an oxide of carbon is going to be carbon and oxygen. So we have carbon, we have oxygen. Number in the question, we're told that for carbon is 27. Again, we have percentages, so we know they need to add up to 100. So 100 minus 27. 100 minus 27 equals 73. Mass number, mass number of carbon is 12. The mass number of oxygen is 16. We need to divide these to get the number of moles. So 27 divided by 12 equals 2.25 73 divided by 16 equals 4.5 so we need to divide these by the smallest number so 2.25 divided by 2.25 is going to equal 1 4.5 divided by 2.25 equals 2 so we have C, O, G. Okay, so here we have three elements in play. We have carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. We have 0.6 grams of carbon, 0.54 grams of hydrogen and 0.4 grams of oxygen. So the mass number of carbon is 12, hydrogen 1, oxygen 16. Dividing. So the number of moles, 0 0.6 divided by 12 equals 0 0.05. 0 0.15 divided by 1 is 0.15. And 0.4 divided by 16 is 0.025. So this is the smallest number here. So 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.025 is 1. 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.025 is 2. And 0.15 divided by 0 0.025 equals 6. So we have C2H6O. Okay, and a real A star question to finish this off, finish off here. You need to have quite a lot of knowledge to do this. So instead of um, giving us the elements, they have given us the products of a combustion reaction. So it says when a hydrocarbon was burnt completely, the product products formed were found to be 1.1 grams of carbon dioxide and 0.09 grams of water. Find the empirical formula of the hydrocarbon. So the first thing you need to know is the formula of carbon dioxide. That is CO2 and the formula of water, which is H2O. Now you need to be able to work out the mass. Um, let's go with the number first, so 1.1 and 0.9 grams. Then we need to work out the mass of these. And I know that carbon dioxide is 44 and that water is 18. If you're not sure how I worked out these masses, go back and have a look at one of my previous videos. Then we just treat it exactly the same way. We need to divide 1.1 by 44, and that gives us 0 0.025. And then 0 0.9 divided by 18 gives us 0 0.05. Divided by the smallest. So uh, 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.025 equals 1. 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.025 equals 2. Now this is a really tricky question for a number of reasons. You might automatically write down um, CH2 as your answer, but that's not right because in carbon dioxide we have one carbon. Whereas in water, we have two hydrogens, and two times two 
is for. So it's C H four. There are this is, this is a really tricky question. This is this is proper A star question. This so well done if you managed to have a go without looking at any of the answer beforehand. Um, you, you had to make a quite a large number of intellectual leaps to be able to do this question. It is very very tricky. So well done if you did it. And this would be right at the end of exam paper if something came up like this. It's very hard.